Welcome back, ladies and gents. Tom wasn't joking when he said a short break. We will be jumping into the game very shortly. Our second best of three of the first day of DreamHack Masters. Our privilege and delight to bring all the action to you. And here we go. We're right off to the races. It's train. We both had a couple of head scratching moments there with the veto. Maybe Godsent can get things kicked off well, but they will be starting on the T side of train, which typically doesn't fare too well against Astralis's defense. Stack up on the catwalk, Zipex dropping down alongside Device, doing a bit of damage, but eating it in return. And Godsent haven't fully invested or committed to this B hit just yet. What was that angle from Zipex? Like, that was such an odd one to sort of try and take. I've not really seen too many people do that before, but uh, nothing comes of it, I guess. So I'm just going to try and take a, a weird elevated angle there. It's going to be the pop drop. They go down, but don't really find anything, at least initially. And, oh, Dupree's going to get flashed into the angle almost perfect. Leaves his opponent blind, but he doesn't get a kill for his troubles. No opening pick, no opening casualties on either team. And now they decide to go all in. 40 seconds to spare. Damage just being chipped away. Death by a thousand paper cuts, but no body has dropped just yet. Now Madden opens his account, breaking the deadlock and a flurry of Danish kills come into fruition. Zipex with two. Stiko's all that remains. Nice headshot at range, but no Molotov to deal with the defusal. He has to come out swinging with some block headshots, does connect onto Dupree, but at that range, the USP will shine brighter. Astralis, successful retake. Uh, the, the worry for me when I look at this godsent roster is, is almost the opposite of Emmy's problems previously. Like, I would say that when Emmy was in contact, he had too many stars and not enough, like, utility supportive players who can set people up. In this team, I always almost look at the other bracket. Like, you've got a lot of experienced players with a few youngsters in there. But at the same time, I feel like if you match up against some of these top teams in sheer firepower, I just don't see them winning it through. Like, don't get me wrong, Madam Farlig and actually Zen, as of recent, who's been their top rated player, can definitely frag. But say, for example, you put them up against a Vitality or even maybe a Spirit. Like, do I think that they can beat them in raw aim? No. Yeah, I think that's fair. Definitely echo a lot of those statements. And I feel like Astralis, a team that have plenty of natural ability, that much is for sure. Typically, they'll rest more on their tactics, their strategies, utility. They are the grandmasters of so many aspects of Counter-Strike, helmed by Glaive. But it's Dupree that's actually died first. One of the more aggressive components of this Danish lineup. Probably shouldn't refer to them as the Danes. We do have Farley also on the server. Zen, the Finnish element, starts to spray out through an Ivy. Nothing too significant, though, in terms of damage exchange between him and Glaive. A little bit of a stalemate. Molly's also been tossed down, but this is where the lack of members on Astralis does start to hurt them. They have to give up some key integral choke points. So Main and Pop Dog being pushed simultaneously. Time beginning to get to 30 seconds. Bit of an issue. Farley with two big entries, but there's damage inflicted from Magus. He can't finish off the kill or deny the bomb plant. And his teammate of Zipex has gone down alongside himself from that man, Zen. One to one, excellent round from Godsent, bouncing straight back in with success. Yeah, well played force from them. Uh, heavy IV control, it seems to be a big part of their gameplay at the moment. Now, something I wanted to mention in the pre-show, but we I think we slightly ran out of time, is when it comes to Astralis and upset matches, over the last few months, dating back to, I would say, early September when they lost to Complexity, which I'm, I'm calling Complexity an upset, but even that's a bit of a stretch. The only teams they've lost to are Na'Vi, G2, Heroic, and Vitality. Arguably some of the top teams in the world. I think G2 maybe not right at the top in terms of ranking, but in terms of their ability to upset a match, I would say they're right up there with the best of them now with the firepower that they've got in the roster. So there's not been many teams that have been able to beat this Danish powerhouse who you wouldn't expect to be able to beat them. So Godsen are going to have to break the mold. And that's bear in mind, while they switched players in the mix of that and brought back Zipix for Aztec, who at the time was one of their best players. So they have 
showed impressive consistency. Now they just need to show, okay, we can now go and win ourselves some tournaments again. Zipex, nice, quick deagle. Jeffrey goes unchecked but can't make the most of it. And that whiff will certainly cost them the round. Well, I've said that, but D Device is still alive. As being up there, Mr. Consistent, one of the best players for a number of years. Able to land some more shots, but any will survive on about 50. And this is where the other Godsent members will start to move into position, and Farlig is the man to put an end to the resistance. Astralis go 1-2 behind. But it, it is an interesting set of narratives here, Tom, that we come into this tournament where, you know, if, if someone had taken a while off of, of CS and come back, and they're like, well, Astralis, they're still God Emperor of Counter-Strike. Not quite. They've been made to bleed. They've been shown to be mortal but they are on the right path back up towards the peak, towards the summit. And this would be a solid way of, of gaining a bit more belief from a lot of people out there that still aren't completely sold that they are the best team in the world. If they can come out here and win Masters comfortably, they may turn some heads again. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of teams are almost in the bracket of, like when we spoke to Stown earlier, like, I want to play Astralis again. Because at this point, there's people doubting us because there are teams like Astralis who still are going to come back into the land period at least. Dupree somehow has managed to get himself two kills with the USP, making this one a little bit more costly than I'm sure Godsent would like. Now, for me in this matchup, if Godsent even go close like in some of the maps i'll be feeling confident for their team because they made a pretty big change recently as said they have played just one best of three it was a brutal blast playing match i think it was versus mouse sports that they obviously didn't win it was their first match to really look at things they've come in with a veto that definitely intrigues me by letting their own choice of permaban with crystal go through and try and basically punish them on a different map by taking out Inferno, which is one previously they were happy to play, but evidently facing off against Astralis on it might not be the greatest of ideas. So I like what we've seen so far. They've got off to a strong start, but now the weapons come into play, Vince, and that's where this becomes a different ball game. However, for Madden, he's managed to get very far without being spotted and actually gets rid of Dupree. He is that X Factor that we were discussing in the DreamHack Open November. To have players like Madden that you can just unleash and allow him to go out and just cause mayhem by himself. And the instant reaction is forthcoming from Astralis. They all dip back towards their spawn, almost giving this round up, stacking on B, hoping for that gamble to pay off. But it doesn't look like that will be the case. And why would Godsent give up this A site? They've got great positions, forward situation where they can just plant the bomb down. They got enough money to justify actually chasing this out. I'd maybe like to see Zen and Steko go for this. They've got M4s. You want to upgrade to AKs anyway. And that Zen in particular has eight and a half thousand dollars. So try and get rid of some of these guns if you can. Maybe this is where the reputation of Astralis precedes them and too much respect is shown across. But judging from the economy, if they could take one of these guns away, that could be enough to put Astralis in a really bad position. Device though holds on with the AWP may not go checked by Emmy, who seems content to just stay at range. This does mean, though, that God sent hot off to a 4-1 lead. They did pick train, should be mentioned. But on the T side, they're getting the better fit so far. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's good to see. Like, them getting off to a strong start is important. It's a map I'm sure that if they're willing to pick this versus Astralis, they have done more than their fair share of research. Like, I've spoken to Emmy a fair few times, and of course, their coach of Devil Walk is someone that you're never really going to shy away from when it comes to the amount of work and effort you know he puts in. It's actually He's actually got my favorite player cam ever, because whenever you cut to it, he never looks happy. And considering, I don't know if you've spoken to Devil Walk, he's, he's a very friendly and happy person. To see him so frustrated all the time does make me giggle a little bit. Oh, he's a super nice guy. We're like one of the most approachable people in esports. So yeah, does he, he's got the same problem as me. Just always looks miserable. If, even if I'm not, people <laughs> think I'm just distinctly unhappy. It's just my face. I can't help it. <laughs> it's the way Maybe I am. He's born with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Godsend, though, looking to try and pivot into another B play. There's so many Molotovs down, but wherever Zipex walks, there's fire. 
And now he has to give up the site, funneling all of Astralis to the backside of B. However, all five of them are here. Make that four. Farlik springs into life, springs into action, and snatches away device in the process. Glade trying to make moves up the side. No one's watching this from the tees, but it only costs them one life. And that could be the moment that finalizes this round, or perhaps not. Zipex and Dupree come back again for more kills. Farlick goes walkies, and Dupree strikes for another time. A 3k for him. And even though they didn't have a kit, they got those kills so rapidly, there's enough time for the defuse. Yeah, I think it's very easy for people to forget that there was a time in Astralis where Dupree actually took over the primary AWP role from device the, the man is a menace with that gun so much so that even device at a time was like yeah you know have a go have, have, a, have an attempt at it see if you can do it better obviously not the case necessarily nowadays and in fact in this round in particular he's not even going to get the secondary to his name but still a big round from him and one that i'm sure godsent are going to be disappointed to lose the thing is as well for them to win this series we have to look at this that madden and farlig need to be very impressive and i think they will even need the likes of a zen or a Stico to come up as well of course i feel like for emmy i'm not expecting a whole lot at least at this stage but when you are an in-game leader of a new team especially if you're one brought in your focus is on making sure everybody else plays well your overall in-game stats are meaningless you can work on that once the synergy wants to sort of almost I guess mold of the team works on its own without him having to micromanage. At this point though, his stats are meaningless. It's all about the rounds. Exactly, and if you can mold that team and start to get some cohesion and effect, you'll also find as a byproduct, your own stats will also improve. Exactly. It has a knock-on effect for sure. It's this tandem that you see so often in CS Glaive. Speaking of Emmy has taken his head and collected it at great cost to his own hp though down to eight but he won't be pressured from main more of the cts are there laid in wait quick rotation over onto the a side astralis typically so fast to react and rotate accordingly such a good read of the game and god sent it seems like they've been paralyzed for the time being mainly off the back of utility there's 30 seconds to go they've got to make moves and they've barely got any real estate Farlig's going to start things off well. Glaive's still in position, but he's desperately low. However, he springs into action at the perfect time, and Dupree and Magis will combine to give them a comfortable third round. A slow take from Godson, and to be fair, they did manage to get the entries. Unfortunately, Glaive was a thorn in their side. And, and something else we haven't really spoken about too much is obviously the, the changes that we've seen to the structure of Astralis. Magis taking over as a an in-game leader, freeing up Glaive to actually be a little bit more aggressive it seems in the style of play that he has and I, I'll, I'll be honest if you told me that was an idea initially I probably would have frowned upon it not been too happy about the idea mainly because firstly you're taking Glaive away from a position that he is legendary in but also the chances are Magic's is his stats might fall off himself so I, I was questioning it but it seems like so far in this roster it hasn't been going too badly it hasn't, and maybe it just adds that sort of fresh element towards Astralis. You know, there has been a lot of talking about burnout on the team and some players taking a step back and then coming back later on. Maybe this is just the, the slight tweak that they required. And I'm sure if at any point Magus needs a second opinion, there's not too many better players out there to ask than Glade. Just a quick tap on the shoulder like, mate, do you have any ideas? I'm sure he's got plenty of them. And because he's not focusing so hard on micromanaging everybody else, he still allows him to perform better and have more clarity. Great flashbang. Glaive supporting him with Dupree, who goes in, gets himself the frag, Madden getting tagged down from a molly, and also the HE, but it's the AWP of Magisk who picks it up for the secondary, who goes in for more, and then silences Farlik. It's a five on two, and Astralis making that comeback a reality. It's a very rough patch of rounds after winning the pistol. They lost three or four in a row. And yet here they stand again, Tom. And it seems like this is going to be the ideal situation where not only do they get some rounds back to back, but if they keep all five players alive, their economy is going to start to boom. Oh, I mean, he's done a lot of damage with the Molotov, but taken a hell of a lot in return. I think that this is a really interesting choice of map as well, because as an in-game leader, I, I don't know if you disagree with me, Vince, but I would say the toughest T side in the entire game right now is Train. 
It's definitely up there. Yeah, I mean, Train is such a strategical map, and I feel like it can feel so claustrophobic and difficult if you come up against a rock solid CT side. Like, you, you just feel at no point can you get easy real estate. If their utility's on point on A main, for example, as Madden found out, you just get shut down by HEs and Molotovs. You try going down Pop Dog, good luck to you. Try hitting B. It, it can be such a difficult map to crack open. So it's, yeah, I'd, I'd say it's it's definitely top two difficult sides to call on. Mm. So that's, and that's the thing, like Emmy going into this series, look, this was obviously the plan, as said, like their veto clearly looked like they were trying to push Astralis maybe out of their comfort zone slightly. But that means you chose to start off your second match ever, first match in this tournament versus Astralis on the toughest tier side in the game. Like, you have got to have a plan. Like, if, if you're doing this, there has to be some depth to this. Because if they just now get bodied out of this, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. So I'm hoping that we're going to see some specific rounds where somebody on this Astralis roster is pressured out of position. Yeah, and just to go a step further as well, like not only are you kicking things off on Inferno, but also you're allowing Nuke to be played, which for me is, it's either neck and neck or maybe slightly less difficult. But it's a very hard side to make work. Both orbs though chime in. As two pistol frags came into effect from both Emmy and Stiko, Madden snuck around the back of Dupree and now still alive on full HP. If Mages not careful, he may lose his life, but he holds his ground as do Astralis. That's a great cost though, and that'll bring at least some of these players back down to reality as they have to replenish their purchase. Yeah, I, I think even if it comes closer, the bank of device with starting this round with over $11,000, I think we'll have them covered. And, and that's the real worry so far. That's probably the first round where we've really seen any damage come into the side of Astralis when they've started their winning streak. And a lot of that came off what? The, the three rounds they managed to get off the back of the force fire then we also had the one round where astralis came in with one of the weaker purchases since they've actually got like a, a decent buy come in well i guess you also had the upset round that they managed to win but uh yeah the second they got everything in godsend haven't looked particularly close to winning any of these rounds and it looks like they're going to try and play a hero rifle in this one this is something madden does quite regularly uh we see him actually quite often even go for a Mac 10 in some of their buy rounds when he has invested into this hero rifle, which he actually does play pretty well, especially on maps like Inferno, for example. But uh, obviously they were the ones to actually take this, uh, take that map out of the pool. So uh, not wanting to face Astralis, but as said, that's understandable. I think Astralis have proven time and time again that Inferno is a map you do not want to face them on. also be a difficult map in terms of uh, getting full set plays and, and plan B's and C's into effect after a very short period of time. So understandable. God sent. Not faring too much better in this round, even with the hero AK. Proving there will be no fairy tale ending in round 10. Grenade deployed perfectly. Shrapnel finishes off onto Farlig. Stiko at least has an M4 in his hands, so maybe he can make something happen here, but it does feel like we're getting to that point where best they can really hope for is a bit of damage limitation here, Tom, because they should be shut down the second they get out into the open. Magisk is proving to be quite the capable secondary AWPer, as if we didn't already know that. And there's Device with the primary Zen. Goes down Glaive, but the rest falls into place as we expected. The God sent now, they'll have a buy. I wouldn't even mind them taking a pause before this one. Just give themselves a little bit of a moment to talk things through. As said, Madden quite regularly drops down to the Mac 10 in these sort of situations where he has invested into the hero rifle. They did a little bit of damage, but I, I would almost argue that in the last round, you wouldn't have really been able to, unless you were hoping to win the round with a hero rifle, which is bold. Even the damage you would have done doesn't really affect the Astralis too much at this stage. Already, as well, we've seen a tag on Tafalik who's going to have to just scurry away in the early stages. And look at Zipix. Like, I feel like there's got to a point already in this match where Astralis are starting to take liberties. Like, we've seen multiple pushes now into the upper B-Halls, and there has been nothing to stop them. They've just been allowed to take this control. Yeah, this is huge. You can see the impact it has. Four players now just stuck on the side of A. 
The flashbang, we've already seen this come in a couple of times. Last time it was Glade flashing in for Dupree, but Dupree doesn't mind being the assist that he tosses in this, the flash. Zen can walk out onto Ivy. They just got to pick there for Magisk, maybe anticipating no second player will be pushing through. But even with that oversight, it only costs them one death. And Madden, you spoke about how he can use the Mac 10. He trades up to the AWP and uses it to devastating effect on Magisk. But these just feel like droplets going into a bucket right now. It's not really doing a great deal. He does have control over the bomb. That will force some respect from Astralis. Can't fully stack onto the A side. So they've sent over Zipex to B. And Glaive is watching Connector. 23 seconds. Madden. Oh, he spots the freebie onto Zipex. He misses his shot. He's about to get close line from Glaive. And that'll be the round over. They'll be thinking what could have been there, though, Tom. If he connected onto Zipex, that could have been a B plant. And then the, the round was certainly back open for debate. Yeah, it, it still felt like, I don't know, like the ocean's coming in and you're trying to protect your sand castle with a bucket. Like, the, the chances are he was never going to get out of that situation and, well, he was going to get obliterated. And unfortunately, that's just been the way the rounds have gone. Interestingly as well, I, it's, it's just a small point. It might have just been that the players were getting a little bit more aggressive. But how the guy with the MAC-10 is the last one alive, I, I don't really understand. Like, that's got to be the guy that's almost the distraction play and... As said, when it comes to Inferno, it's normally just him like running up Banana and being aggressive with that gun to try and distract and allow the opposition to trade. So, yeah, a bit, a bit disappointing that he just ends up in a clutch situation that, if we're being honest, we never really expected him to come close, even if there were opportunities there. 7-4, to four, it has been absolute domination over the last six rounds for Astralis. Money still being built up. Comfortable look for the Danish powerhouse. And as of yet, we're starting to, well, worry, I guess you could say. Eventually, though, Glaive is going to get overwhelmed. And I have been liking how aggressive he's being. He seems to be taking this as almost just a bit of fun. Like, okay, I'm going to push everything, fight everything. But this time, they've finally been punished. Punished by a deagle in the hands of Farlik. Madden earlier... Claimed their first kill after aggression through Ivy backfired. Zipex on your screen. Cool, calm, and collected as ever. I don't know exactly where the players have pushed in, but because they have device at Deep Ivy watching for that push, you know they've got to be behind these trains or they've went all the way back in towards A main. So it seems like they may have mind gamed themselves here, Astralis. Have they assumed the godsend have double backed and they're heading towards the B side? They smoked off ramp. They've kept two players over here. But in amongst all of this, godsend have not budged an inch. They're staying in position. They are playing the mind game to the Astralis. And now they can push across to the site. Device is getting aggressive again. He may get the drop onto Zen. But in the post plant, Zen has no reason to peek. He can play the close angle. He can force Device into an awkward position. And even though Device is struck once, does he expect Zen to be on the close angle? Hell no. Zen comes out with his tech nine and dispatches Device two on two. They know roughly where Madden is. He's already struck once in this round. And so they've got their crosshair across to the position. But all of the pressure has now got to go across to Astralis. They have to retake the site. Zen misses out his shot with the orb. Comes out into the open. Side swipes onto Zipex. And now it falls upon Dupree who gets caught in transition. As he tries to relocate across to the site. He's cut down where he stands. Really nice round from Zen, like especially in those afterplant situations. But again, it, it seems to be Ivy that's the, the point of contention where we just seem to see a little bit of like holes in the defense for Astralis, where they've been able to get out of there a few times. It's just normally there's been players in the clutch. I also think that actually Zen had to do more than maybe he should have done because it seemed like both players in that situation were fighting pop when there was no way that Dupree could have been out. So Madden, if anything, could have just played a little bit more passive. But I guess that's just me being a little bit overly critical and the fact that zen manages to win the round anyway is fantastic for not only them getting an extra round on the t side but more so because it now starts to put astralis's economy on the brink if they win this next one there's a reality where they win this half which hey you told me that a couple of rounds ago i, I would have called you mad vince yeah this quickly got out of control for godsend but i'm glad that 
able to get their hands back on it. And this is also as a result of, of instantly winning that second round and putting the pressure back on Astralis. It gave them a bit of foundation to build off one for one trade, though. Early on, both kills situated around the B side of the map, which means that Zipex is getting flashed out, has to relocate. Damage inflicted with the M4, but Emmy comes out in ahead. Magisk, who was aimed in and would have had him dead to rights, unscoped at the very second he crossed over. That's unfortunate timing, which may cost them so dearly. Glaive, though, at least watching the back of Magisk as all three of them culminate together and look to push back on the site. But look, there's two Molotovs and there's no smokes in play for the Danes, even if they get onto the site. And that's a big query still. They have to contend with a Molotov of Farling. They've got to put that pressure down now. Farling peeks out with the AWP. He misses his shot, but now he can line up the Molly. Molly tossed in. Tech 9 switched across to make him more mobile. He can get up close and personal. Coming down towards the ramp. Has heard no smoke and no defuse on the site. Either of them have a kit. They're going to have to stick on this. They picked up the kit, so they're going to have the defuse after all. And it's going to be heartbreak for Farling. That was winnable, but he missed two crucial AWP shots. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Like, other than the shots, it was very well played, like his positioning, his movement, but unfortunately he just doesn't land it at the crucial point. I have to say, Glaive seems to be just having an absolute whale of a time. Like an incredible round from him, four kills to basically retake the site single-handedly, and he got the opening pick in the round. Like, maybe in-game leading wasn't for him after all. He's meant to be the star. Device, however, might have a few questions and queries about that one. He may have failed to get the number one player in the world a few times, but there's no doubt that he is the crown jewel of this Astralis team. When you talk about consistently towards the top end of CS, there's no one really that can say they have the longevity of a player like Device. He's been around that level for so, so long. Mr. Dependable, he's not necessarily been their top player in this game. You've already highlighted Glaive, but Magisk for me has actually outshone him with the AWP. The secondary AWP, the IGL of Magisk just putting down the pain and misery around this Ivy position. Farlig, a bullet away from his demise. Going by Madden and Zen, and once they've slowed things down, Madden doesn't seem to have had that layer of impact that we saw earlier on. And maybe this is where the point that you raised, Tom, about Emmy coming into the forefront, not blaming him at all. He hasn't had enough time to gel with the team. Hasn't had enough time to go through all of their set plays, their plan Bs, their plan Cs. And it seems like they've run out of ideas, run out of steam. And now they're being vented off by Astralis. 30 seconds, all five players remain on the Danish squad and only Zern against them, but not for much longer. Astralis ending the half very solidly indeed. Yeah, coming into a 9-5 a situation, looking to try and basically get themselves into double digits here. And unfortunately for Godson, they don't really have the money to go for a proper buy. I, I will say, like, sure, the, the rounds that we've seen since, like, the 4-1 scoreline have been fairly dominant. But there's been some opportunities for Godson, which I think is a fairly good sign. Like, getting into afterplant situations is not necessarily easy. And they've actually done a pretty decent job of shutting down Zipix and, in fact, Device, who have both been having a a little bit of a rougher time. The problem is, well, the Stralis are like a Swiss army knife. There's many tools that they can use to obliterate you. Although maybe that's not what you should be using a Swiss army knife for. And in this case, we've, uh, we've had some of the other players step up that, well, they may not have necessarily needed in the past. Here we go though. Quick push in. Zipix, he's got a hell of a lot of assists. He's been doing damage, but hasn't been getting the frags this time though. The flashbang leaves Emmy completely blind. And this is a shutdown. Zen will at least pick up one. And actually, Farlix found another. However, Zen now needs to close this on his own. And it's going to be more of the same. A good start for Godson, but unfortunately, it's been whittled down by Astralis. Now we head to the break to see if they can do any better on the CT side.
You want to go back out into the cold? More than ever. The past is written, but we are left to write the future. JBL presenteert JBL Quantum, de ultieme gaming headset. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for sticking by, and of course you will. It's been a great map so far. Not so much if you're a Godsent fan, but they did have moments, as you touched on just before the halftime break, Tom, that there, there are things to be a little bit more optimistic about if you're Godsent. And here's another one. They're now on the CT side, a side where they won't have to be as strategically adept, but you are against Astralis' T side of the map, and that's always going to prove to be quite the struggle. Yeah, Astralis renowned for being able to push and pull and mold people into the positions they want them to be in. And it's not going to get any easier from here. The other thing they're very good at is utility usage. So, yeah, there's going to have to be a very good half for Godsent. And I do think they might have needed to do a little bit more on their T side if we were really going to be singing their praises, especially knowing that their permaban is the next map coming up. This is a must win for them if they're going to have a chance in this series. Quick push through from Glaive. He's almost become the entry fragger of the team, it seems. That nade is ridiculous, though. A hell of a lot of utility damage catching Zipix and Glaive. And now Godsent might be in with a chance. May very well be, but it feels like it may be fleeting at best. Already pulling over two rotations on the B side. Seems like they've made their bed. Now they need to lay in it and hope and pray that Astralis don't decide to hit this A site instead, which is seeming more and more likely. The bomb now traversing over towards A main where Dupree is sat. They also have the vice perch just outside of Ivy. It's going to be a fake. They're throwing in the smokes. There's no push down the ramp just yet. And in a couple seconds, Godsent are going to realize it. It's delayed. They've waited a long time for this rotation, and already Astralis are getting way too close, but Emmy takes down Device, who is not anticipating that position to show itself. Madden, in the meanwhile, has to try and fend off against Ivy. Postplant comes in. Good shot from Madden onto Dupree, and that now gives them another avenue of aggression back onto the site. He can wrap around the tees. Oh. This is such an integral play from Madden. It's allowing the rest of the troops to start to culminate through Connector, and Madden's not slowing down. It's another headshot to him, and a successful retake for Godsent. Madden, take a bow. That was nuts. That was just him running through and just like pre-firing random angles. Just like, okay, maybe he's here. And then getting a headshot. Maybe he's here, getting a headshot. That was so sick from Madden. And those are the sort of plays that we sort of identify with him. Like there, there might be people out there who don't really know 
the story of how this guy ended up in this team. And it was basically that he played against Godsend, did so well that they went, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna pay to get him on our team. Like, I don't want to play against that ever again. And uh, well, the, the rest is history. They've been together for quite a long time now. Obviously, uh, there's been a lot of, I guess, a few turbulent times. Like there was uh, the things that happened between him and Devil Walk, where it's like he's he's trying to be firm with him, trying to get him into shape. And I know that Devil Walk is someone who uh, he can definitely lead this team forward, especially alongside Emmy. I think they're two players who, or two, one being an ex-player, one being a coach and then a player again who could definitely find some way to make this god sent team right again do i think they're going to come in and be able to beat astralis on their second match as this roster no still no even with the pistol win but there's at least hope for them here and, and sure a lot of this has come off to good starts from what we've seen in both halves but you never know maybe if they can start this one off in a similar fashion they have an opportunity Vince. the problem is Astralis are doing exactly what they did to them and investing into this round. However, they got an AWP for Far League in round two. I wonder if Madden actually bought the AWP and dropped it for him. He had to. He had to. Yeah. With that 3k. Because you, yeah, you also see that he's got Kevlar and Madden has no nades left. So not only does Madden just pull out the, the round out the hat, but then he has the, the selfless aspect of him. Though he's like, have, have the AWP. Have this one and see what you can get done with it. And Farleg has repaid that generosity in kind with the opening pick. And I agree. I mean, I don't think Godsend will feel... Of course, they're not writing themselves off. They won't feel super confident about this. Oh, it's all Ooh. awkward for device. He got stuck on the ladder. He couldn't move. And anyone that's played CS knows just how bad your aim gets when you're on the ladder. <laughs> all over the place. You're never hitting anybody. And Madden stays in position. How is he still alive? How has he not died yet? Finally goes down to Magisk, but he's knocked him down to 30 HP in the process. What, what? the hell, Magisk? Running down the ladder, no scope, Steeko? Are you serious? Okay, if, if we don't have a slow-mo of that, then I might have to leave the broadcast. Because that's one of the most... I, I don't understand. How, how did that land? He was... It looked like he was not even looking anywhere near him. Literally I'm, just... I can hear a few... Oh, God. Oh, Just go as on. I said, the on ladders, your accuracy is garbage. He goes and does that like two seconds later. I can tell you now, someone was typing in chat there and whatever they said, I imagine we couldn't show it on stream. Because like, my response to that would just be like, okay, mate, like what? that's ass. <laughs> that's not even possible, but... Oh. It's still going to be Godsend winning the round, thankfully. They did convert it. And well, here we go. Emmy, maybe with a chance to pad his stats a little bit. He's not been bad, actually. In the first match he played, it really was like a, a rough time. But hey, a triple spray down. It may be an Antico round, but get that HLTV rating up a little bit. Well, Zipex is trying to fall into the B site. The fact is, he didn't have anything to go with. It's just Dupree trying to somehow get the bomb down and a flawless round for Godsend. Fantastic stuff. They'll get themselves up to eight. Money looking good. They've got an AK, an AWP in the mix as well. And now finally, we're going to see the buyers from Astralis. Now, bear in mind, this has now been a pistol win and the follow-up rounds. And then previously, we saw them get the upset round in round number two. So... This scoreline is still padded. Astralis have won the majority of the buy rounds, but this is still a way for them to get back into this map. It's their map choice, and now they're on the CT side. Let's see if this stabilized economy, though, can yield more rounds, or if they do start to barrel out of control. Glaive, who had so much early success with aggression, maybe bites off more than he can chew his life away doing a lot of damage in the process but right off the back of astralis getting a solid buy into effect to lose the first player that quickly is going to be devastating and dupree tries to go for a wide swing but doesn't anticipate two players pushing his location he isn't fully punished with his life he's dropped down low zipex now holding on and emmy survives with 12. god sent just by the skin of their teeth keeping that player advantage intact Device trying to sneak his way through. Been having a bit of a rough time and it's not about to get any better. 
Farlig will remove him from the round. And now you just look at the HP remaining. Dupree, he's low. Emmy and Sticker, you mentioned, they're low as well. Magis being one of the few healthier members. Gonna have to try and do a lot here. Left blind as he looks to try and push down. And Emmy's coming in from behind. He spotted him as well. This is so much information. A free kill for the IGL. Leaving just Dupree, who's also tagged incredibly well. It's left on to just him and while well, he'll fall as well godsend a fantastic round emmy as well seemingly leading the charge and as said i expected his stats to be fairly poor having to try and drag this team through he's currently 13 and 12 he's having a pretty good game godsend impressing me I i've got to say i feared the worst for them after the first half went pretty off the mark honestly was looking like they were going to get at least 8-7. Suddenly fell into the abyss. But this CT side has proved to be pretty damn impressive. Now, this is an eco, by and large. So, I somewhat talk over this a little bit. Madden gets a 3k. This is where Godsent will start to build in that belief. Again, it's not that you write yourself off. These guys are all super competitive. They all believe that they can be the best team in the world. I'm sure of it don't get to be in this position without having a lot of self-belief. But there is like an air of, okay, look, Emmy is new to the roster. We're just finding our way. Let's see what we can get done. The fact that they are 10 to 10 against Astralis on train, and they've won five rounds in a row on their CT side. Like, is that fairy tale actually possible now? Looking good. I'm, I'm going to hold my judgment before we see a, a couple of buy rounds come out of Astralis, if they can shut them down. Maybe we start to believe. Of course, this is their choice. Dust2 coming up next. Statistically, not a fantastic map for Astralis, but one we'd still favor them on. Adam looking to try and get aggressive, gaining confidence as we go. And that's the thing. Some of the kills he's got have been more like stat padding. He had an impactful pistol for sure, but like there's been a few eco kills in there. I want to see him getting those kills because the more confidence this guy gets, the scarier he becomes in the server, the riskier the plays he'll make. But a lot of the time, the more often he'll pull them off. And I don't know if the Astralis would be expecting anybody to show them that level of disrespect. They are the probably the greatest roster we've ever seen. Glaive, that is not a fantastic nade. He's caught himself completely, but maybe just sacrificing some health to gain a little bit of extra energy. He will take down Emmy. And that's not the start they were looking for. Zen, however, has responded. Zipex has not been winning a lot of duels when it comes to this B-side play. Sticko, in fact, it's going to go through. It's just ruined Dupree on the way past. Device finds a trade at least, but look at the time. They're running out of it. 25 seconds left. Farlig drops magic. Zen's still going strong. And it's left onto Device. And does he even have time? He has time, but he has to get a kill right now. And with two plays over on A, one being in connector... That puts even more pressure, and I think now he's realized that unless he could have got a pick the second he peeked out of Pop Dog, that round was over. Godsent will take the lead, Tom. Six rounds in a row on their CT side. And it goes to show how confident Glaive is in his own ability that he's been shut down now a few times in Pop Dog and still went in there and still got success. But then everybody else on his team got repelled with ease. Godsent don't even look like they're sweating now, Tom. Like, this seems comfortable for them. Yeah, I think as well, the thing I'm most impressed with is the fact that they are making plays, which again, I, I feel like a lot of teams wouldn't be making versus Astralis. Like we know them for how well structured they are, how difficult it can be to make aggressive plays versus them. And just look at Sticko. He just almost runs and guns and just rips off Dupree's head. You've got Emmy, even though he didn't win the duel, went very aggressively into pop. Zen as well pushed up the, the B ramp. Like they are just looking for fights. They are looking to challenge Astralis. And right now they're winning. Like they are winning those duels almost every single time. So I don't know if Astralis are just being caught off guard by some of the plays that are currently being made by Godsend, but they need to wake up because this map is slipping away from them. We had our doubts. We had our question marks over the veto. Maybe something that we can to the players after this uh, best of three is concluded 
But we also said it's really not a bad veto for God's sake. Zen in the meanwhile, though, now needs to hold the line as a whole bunch of T's rush towards him. But Dupree separates himself from the pack. Device at least gets the avenging blow onto Zen with the orb. And now Farlig takes the initiative. He pushes forward. He wants to shut down his Danish brothers. Device now standing alongside Glaive. It's a 2v4. He's already got one, but Farlig death from above, leaving Glaive to show us just how aggressive he can be, but he walks out into the hail of bullets and Godsent now extend their lead to two. <laughs> and we might actually end this map as the top fragger in the server. <laughs> well, he's, he's wrecking them at the moment. I, the last few rounds have been very impressive and sure, we got a couple of kills finally coming out for device, but yeah, if, if you told me going into this game that we would have both device and Zipix being out by any, I would have asked what you're taking. Like, let's put it that way. But that's the case at the moment. Again, we're going to be back to pistols for Astralis. Seemingly struggling a bit now on this T side. I wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt that we hadn't seen many buy rounds from them. But now a couple have gone past and they've gone with the win. Godsend are winning these cleanly. Farlig, $12,000. Zen, $10,000. But Sticko, well... He at least is going to have to rebuy going into the next round as the Deagle of Device finds one. Madden, the Flash is a, a little bit late. He'll survive for at least a time, but Zipex has found the trade. Emmy retrieving the AWP and going to look to try and use it for himself. But this round is doable now, Vince. Even more doable than Zipex has carved a path through Zen and Device has let the Deagle do the talking for him. Emmy, the man of the hour. A man that's been playing pretty solidly has missed a shot that probably costs him the round. And this has been one of the worst buys that Astralis have had to their name on this entire half with Deagles. Upgraded pistols and that's basically it. And now they can transfer their bank balance and they can transfer their arsenal of weaponry significantly. And they want to take down Emmy. They want to make sure this AWP plays no further part in the round. They can buy more. But it'll be at the great cost of their finances. That being said, though, Astralis need to make sure they don't get too carried away. Although they will be able to buy even if all five die, it's more about the bigger picture that starts to come into fruition. The round is over. That much is sure certain, but it may seemingly like he will hold on to the AWP after all, Tom. Astralis did go in, but it was more half-hearted and disjointed, and they got punished. Yeah, the problem still lies, though, that after seven rounds in a row on the CT side, the first round they lose is to Deagles. And sure, there's some pretty ridiculous shots coming in, but these are rounds that you don't really want to be punished for, especially if you read the economy correctly. Like, you see the positions, pretty much all the Astralis players are getting kills. It, it, a lot of the time, it's close angles where you kind of want to try and avoid that. So I do wonder if Godsent might have slightly misread the economy in this round because they were getting quite up close, and that's not really what, what you want to be doing. Nonetheless, they do have a purchase back in, as you mentioned. A double orb setup will remain with Farlig and Madden picking it up. They're still going to leave Zen as that solo anchor, but he's been doing a damn good job so far. We'll see if he can continue that, though, as it looks like he might be about to come under pressure once again. Four players down on box halls. That definitely seems to be the case. Smoke is still up for a while. My Magus takes... Hefty damage from a grenade, I believe that was. Down to 52, he falls. It does seem like Astralis will just wait for this smoke to clear and then they'll go all out aggression. Let the grenades and bullets fly. Zen flashed at the back of the site looking to relocate. If he can get a couple kills, that would be massive for his teammates. It's unlikely he will survive for much longer, but he comes out with that flashbang, takes down Magus, puts it into a 3v5, and has also stalled the bomb back. Then it goes back in for even more damage. But in the blink of an eye, Glaive and Device tag team each other in for three of their own kills. And with 35 seconds to go, it is a two on two, albeit with Glaive on low HP, and a flank coming into effect, and it's Stiko that's now shown his hand. A low health Glaive on 12 has to try and repel the onslaught from two separate angles, but he has the perfect read of the situation. He's done the calculations. He's typed them in. Does he have the correct answer? Hiding on the ladder. 50% of the fuse is ticked away. 
Molly tossed in to try and draw out one of these angles, and Glaive has snaked his way to the top of the train. There's one spray in, but Stiko will go for the wild panic spray and take him out. Godsend just about hold on and pick up 13. Yeah, that was way too close for comfort. I think Godsend actually made a bit of a mistake with the player who didn't have a kit initially going for the defuse, and it almost cost them in the end a nice attempt from Glaive, but unfortunately, that's not really going to help them too much. Zen, though, as said, he's been putting in an absolute shift when it comes to this B site. A multi frag each time, and they're really struggling. They are lucky to get away with that. I'm actually quite surprised Glaive doesn't get both kills. In fact, so much so that Godsend are going to be the ones taking a tactical pause here. I think they know that that's a, a sigh of relief moment. Let's give ourselves a little bit of a time to talk and calm down. I just wonder what Emmy must be saying to the troops right now. Three rounds shy of taking the first map and potentially causing quite the upset. Astralis on the other side of the coin, though. Down but never out. I've managed to force together a buy, and it's a solid one at that. Dupree sacrificing the AK to get more grenades. Fast play may be imminent. Flashbang's over, but a well-placed incendiary. Keeps the T's in position, and Stiko getting the first again. They rush through the fire and the flames, but that's into an early grave. And Magisk is the only player from Astralis that has battled back. Yeah, and it looks like he might be the only one to do anything. He's gone down. Glaive trying to make a push through the Molotov. It's a miss, though, from Farlig. And this has been the man who's probably been the best player, at least going into the T side especially. Glaive has at least given them... Some glimmers of hope. There's a chance to take another duel, but he's not going to win it. Madden will close him down unless it's on to the Clutchmeister himself. He's been quiet this game, and he walks straight into the hands of Zen. 14 to 11. We sort of cast Godsend out after what was a, a pretty poor first half. They managed to only really get rounds off the basis of the pistol, but when it comes to their CT side, they've been stellar. And in fact, it's been Astralis that have managed... Well, they managed one round, Vince. That's it. One round, and it was off the back of pistols. Astralis on their T side as well, man. Like, we, we were kind of talking about this when the roles reversed, and we're saying, oh, look, God sent you're on the CT side. There's definitely some bonuses and some benefits of that being the case, but you are up against one of the most strategically adept teams on the planet. A team on train that they know their way around this map, no problems. One round. And for the most part, most of these rounds, to my reckoning, Tom, have been pretty comfortable for Godsend. You've had a couple of like 2v2s, post plants, but I believe there's only been one or two rounds have actually been defusals. So not only have Godsend by and large been flawless on this CT side, but even the rounds they've won have been pretty convincing shutouts. Well. Another example of a superb nade, but more of a panic from Zen, and he's been overwhelmed. Look at the utility damage, though. So many players have just been wrecked by the amount of grenades thrown by Godsen. They will get a bomb plant, get themselves into position. This is not a full investment from Astralis. This is an attempt to do a bit of damage, steal a round, a double nade from Emmy as well. Zen, you can see, is already starting to celebrate. I think he knows this round is going their way. It's only Magisk left. One before, Teagle in hand, and he gets absolutely nothing done. It will be 15 for Godsent. They are leading the charge and showing that anything Astralis can do at the moment, it seems they can do it better. The double dunk of dreams. Astralis have to save four on the bounce. Otherwise, Godsent will take their choice of train. And we move to Dust 2. It's not a map statistically. That is one of Astralis's best, let's be honest. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that we may be about to witness something truly special, truly surprising. We talked about the early games. We talked about how many of them were close nail biters. I think both of us would have put this down on paper to be one of the more one-sided affairs, and yet it's been anything but. The Vice has an AWP again, but he hasn't really done too much with it, if I'm being honest. On the CT side, it was mainly Magus that was landing the AWP shots different go of it though of course having to be more aggressive and get entries with the orc now but astralis are playing fairly standard Glaive trying to bait out some damage 
from Madden, who's already used his smoke. Still plenty of time left. But can Godsent continue this incredible CT side and tie it up right now? Oh, a cagey round for sure. Much slower from Astralis. Hoping that somebody gives them an opener. And again, a, a fairly heavy reliance on the B site from Godsent is leaving. Zen there alone. In fact, all the way back, it almost looks like they're playing this as a retake, which has been the plan so far. Sticko's going to be left completely blind, but nothing comes of it just yet. They're still yet to really take any map control at all, in fact, and Sticko's just going to fall back to try and group up with the team. They've read that this is going to be a B play, but then some grenades start coming out towards this A site. The bomb's still very far away as well. If it is going towards B, they're going to have to get a move on. 20 seconds, Vince, but Glaive has got them an entry. Madden is here. The rotation's coming. The push comes through, and Glaive has taken this into his own hands. He may not be leading, but he's leading by example as he runs through and gives them a round that maybe never should have been. That bomb was looking sketchy before he did that. Quite literally leading the charge as well into most of these rounds, as we said. On the CT side, he was incredibly aggressive. On retakes, he was typically the first person. And on this T side, really, he's the only player that's looked like a threat. And my concern for Astralis is that's your second round on your T half. You've had a, quite a bit of success on the B side. A side has been barren. Barren of any victories. And can you realistically keep basing success off the uh, off B hits? At what point do Godsent make the slight tweaks and alterations and potentially just shut you down? I would expect to see if we if we have a good spawn from Godsent to go for a, an orc wide peek onto box orbs, that they may very well go for that. It could be a good way of diverting away from all this pressure that's being applied, but we saw a very similar round to this a few rounds ago, Tom. This clearly is where Astralis think Godsent's weaknesses lay. They've now found a couple of opening kills onto Zen as well. He was doing very well in the initial stages, but it seems like Glaive might have his number. But you mentioned it, a complete change. It wasn't quite the old peak that maybe you were expecting. He actually goes up the close ramp, which, hey, it's a bold peak from Farlick, but he actually finds nothing. In fact, they've gone back to the A site where success has been minimal. They have not been able to do too much thus far, and Madden is going to be watching. In fact, after the early stages, they start to rotate back in the other direction. Dupree will do a little bit of extra damage, maybe just trying to show themselves on that side of the map. But now we do have Farlig in the position you desired, Vince, and he is ready and waiting for this push. And I love that they've made this, this alteration. I love that they made this tweak, and it makes perfect sense to me because this has been the threat. This has been the issue now. He's been flashed out. But what does that tell him? It tells him they're getting late box control. Why would they be doing that? And the kill onto Zipex is so integral, so huge. Godsent are in prime position now to get the job done. Oh, it's a bit rough from Emmy. Takes a little bit longer than he probably would have liked. They've got Sticko actually now. Secondary orb because of the HP. A few tagged players for the side of Godsent, which definitely give the opportunities. But again, the time starts to get low, Vince. It's 30 seconds. And the last time they relied very heavily on Glaive getting them an opener. I'm not so sure they can rely on that every single round. 20 seconds is all they have left. They're setting up their grenades as they go for the push. It's a missed shot from Sicko though. That could be enough as Dupree now runs in. Emmy just trying to survive on the site. He knows if he can drop the bomb that that'll be enough to win them the round. Just 10 seconds left. Farlig's dropped another. They hear the bomb being planted, but they're patient. They're waiting. It's all falling apart for Astralis and Godsend have done it. They have taken the map pick of train. Not something I necessarily expected to happen. I'm not even sure it's something I wanted to happen for the integrity of this tournament, knowing that Astralis are one of the favorites. But the fact is Godsend have already come here and surprised us. This is only their second best of three as a unit, and they've taken a map of Astralis.